got a bit of a mystery problem with my radio code. I plugged it into the USB-C on my computer last night to charge and left it sit overnight. Uh, and then shut my computer down, totally forgot about it. Fired up my computer this morning and this is what's happening. And it won't turn on, nothing's happening. I'm not sure if the battery is just totally flat because it's tried to back feed up here all night or what's going on, but it won't fire up bit sad but I think I'm going to investigate. Now given the chances that I can probably get another one of these out of Russia right now is probably pretty slim. I'm going to investigate. There is this little notch here that looks like it's intended to help separate the halves and indeed it seems to be relatively easy to do that. What I intend to do here is open and check battery volts. See if my battery is just totally flat and if we can maybe jump start it. Feels like it's glued further down here, but uh, I'm going to work along and see if I can get it open. We'll do that off camera and I'll tell you the results. I don't expect that there's going to be too many teardown videos of these uh, on the net. Well, there's our battery. That's pretty easy to get to. 3.7 volt, 1 amp hour. Should be relatively easy to do a uh, volt check on. So, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just unplug this. That looks like our detector there. We go. So I'm going to volt check the battery. Multimeter here on 3 volt range. Are my needle probes going to be able to get into this? No, I'll have to find a different way. So far, however, I'm quite impressed at uh, the ability to just replace the battery like this. That is a nice design feature. If I can hold this down here, we should be able to touch across these two. Well, we have about 4 volts. So it would suggest that the battery is charged. Okay, so uh, I guess let's plug it back in again. I had to go back and check with my video to make sure I've got this connector in the correct way around. I believe positive was to the bottom. Can I get this to go back in? That's the next question. Not quite sure how this connector works. I think it's meant to go in from the top and push down. That appears to be the way that connector works. There we go. Okay, we're reconnected. Let's push and hold and see if we'll fire up. Okay, so it got itself a little bit upset and I had to basically turn it off and on again. Not so bad, so let's turn this off. And it's reset to Russian language. It's okay, I should be able to work out how to get that back to English. Now, yeah, we'll just snap fit this back together, but it is nice to know that the battery is so easy to get to. Circuit board looks fairly nice. And uh, there's a good amount of shielding in here, which I think helps with its accuracy. So, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. And there are just standard Phillips head screws. This wouldn't be too hard to service. And it looks like there's a little connector here for the screen. So screen replacements are definitely an option. And uh, it looks like even this has got a little connector here. So replacing the detection element would also be an option. But let's snap this back together, gently. I am glad to see that we can fix that this morning. Okay, does it still fire up? It does. Now, let's see if I can go to settings and put it back into English. Um, I'm going to have to use Google Translate for this. Alright, so I've gone down the settings. Um, and this is apparently the language setting. And this is Russian. I do sort of recognize the Cyrillic there. That sounds like English. That should be better. I had, to, I did have to use Google Translate for that. I am slowly, very slowly learning little tiny bits of Cyrillic. So that looks good. I'll have to go through and change all my other settings. Um, but yeah, interesting little trick to get it working again. So uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. All right. Let's, uh, I'll set the time later. I can plug that into the computer to sync that. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go. Actually, what I should do is check that it wasn't something USB related. Nope, it's going to work just fine. All right, well, I'll update that on the computer. And uh, yeah, so this was an interesting little video on uh, how to fix a problem that I'm not sure anybody has seen before. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one.
well, in the process of checking things up, I uh, thought I'd just get the update. So there's a 105 update. So I'm, uh, I'm going to check that out and update my unit. And as usual, my virus scanner doesn't like it. Although Immunet is a little bit tight assed about this sort of thing. But yeah, um, I usually have to make exceptions for this. All right, we're going to transfer, transfer our working environment from 104. It's all good. And uh, yeah, virus scanner has killed it. All right, after some mucking around, we got 105 installed. Okay, a newer device firmware. So we're going to update our firmware as well. And while it's plugged in, and it uh, turns off and looks scarily like it's done the same thing again, but uh, it's just put it into firmware mode. So that looks all right. Now it's fired up again. All right, looking pretty good. We'll probably see a spectrum come up here in a minute. I'm gonna have to look up the change log and find out what has changed with 105. Well, there's been a bit that's changed since 104. So 104, I noticed they um, added, I think it was uh, energy compensation on here. So since then they've done, what have we got? Reset to factory settings, buttons been added, increased number of spectrum channels to 1024. I'm actually happy they added this to the actual firmware instead of making us pay for a new unit. That's kind of nice. Isotope info fixed. The ability to select units of measurements, ronchins or sieverts, uh, that's kind of handy. Um, okay, what have we got? Fixed an error when starting spectrogram recording. Added an automatic connection restoration when Bluetooth module error occurs. That would be really handy when I'm doing field scanning and I can't hear the thing beeping. Um, displaying of dose rate error was added to the spectrum review windows. Okay, so it adds a, a tolerance, I guess. Um, on the graphs and current values, operational data shown in grey. Modified the algorithm for automatic Bluetooth reconnection. Okay, very handy. All right. Anyway, uh, that's about it for this video. I got it working again and the firmware updated, so I'm happy. I sent them an email. I'm not sure if we'll get a reply. If I do in the next day or so before I edit this video, I'll uh, let you know what they said. But I basically told them what happened and said, here's how I fixed it, just to let you know. So I'll see what they say.